Hi there. How you doing? Good, I hope. I want to tell you about this uh, <clears throat> book and a little bit of history about history, ancient history. Well, it's more likely one of the last books on, of history and the subjects of it from the library. But the name of it is Forbidden Archaeologist Impact by Michael A. Cremo. And I really don't doubt that it will probably gone if it's as important as I think it is. I know I've had a lot of relatives and new people that hated to talk about the past, even the kind that they knew of it was either embarrassing or sad or anything but what's being hid according to this may be what's behind what's going on in this world today. It could be that missing link if you've ever heard of that. So, and that's my words. And the flap says, Forbidden Archaeology's Impact, How a Controversial New Book Shocked the Scientific Community and Became an Underground Classic by Michael A. Cremo. In 1993, Michael Cremo's controversial book, Forbidden Archaeology, co-authored with Richard Thompson, stunned the scientific community with its extensive evidence for extreme human antiquity. According to standard scientific views, humans like ourselves emerged only within the past 100,000 years or so. But forbidden archaeology documented abundant evidence that humans have existed for over millions of years. And why would they want to hide that? My thoughts. The book crossed many intellectual and cultural boundaries. Mainstream scientists, maverick scientists, creationists, UFO researchers, and conspiracy theorists alike were fascinated by forbidden archaeology's theme of suppressed knowledge. But the reaction of the scientific establishment was swift as they defended this challenge to their deeply held beliefs with ridicule, threats, and intimidation. Richard Leakey called forbidden archaeology pure humbug. The American Journal of Physical Anthropology called it drivel. But more open-minded scholars disagreed. An article in British Journal for the History of Science said, Forbidden archaeology brings to attention many interesting issues that have not received much consideration from historians. And the author's detailed examination of the early literature is certainly stimulating and raises questions of considerable interest. After shocking the scientific world, Forbidden Archaeology caught the general public's attention. In 1996, an NBC TV special, The Mysterious Origins of Man, hosted by Charleston Hes Charlton Heston, featured the book. Establishment scientists felt so threatened by this program that they lobbied the Federal Communications Commission to censure and fine NBC for airing it. And forbidding in Forbidden Archaeology's Impact, Michael Cremo shows how a new idea begins to circulate throughout society. He documents the reactions to his expose of a major scientific cover-up. It includes challenging papers Cremo presented at international scientific conferences, his responses, which they refused to print to scientific journals' barrage of negative criticism correspondence with scientists and others about his book, transcripts of Cremo's radio and television interviews, internet messages from scientists waging a campaign of intimidation against NBC for airing the mysterious origins of man. And uh, as I've been doing more research on it, I see where they 
did finally air this, but there are some particular companies that wanted to stop it. Why? Why would they do that? It's a very good question. Uh, Michael I. Cremo is an author and researcher specializing in the history and philosophy of science. His persistent investigations during the eight years of writing Forbidden Archaeology documented a major scientific cover-up, making him a world authority on archaeological anomalies regarding human antiquity. And through his letters and papers and things, I just thought I'd read you some of the things that are in here. And it's a really big, thick book. And very interesting. Uh, conference papers and journal articles, mainstream academic reviews, notices, and related correspondence. Archaeology, anthropology, and biology. History. History of science and sociology of scientific knowledge. And find out what kind of people that we're dealing with. Forewords by scholars. Additional reviews, notices, and related co correspondence. Pro-evolution interest group publications. Now, before we even get any farther, uh, he is not for Darwin's evolution theory so much as it, it has become a type of religion for some people that are trying to convert others to it. And this is pretty much a fight in between religion and uh, Darwin, Darwinists. But yet, there could be a connection in here between the two. And perhaps it's the marriage of it that some people are trying to prevent because there's something going on that we did not know about. And things would have been quite different today, had we. Alternative science publications, general, um, our alternative science publications, archaeology, reviews from religious perspectives and publications, New Age publications and publications featuring paranormal, paranormal phenomena, UFOs, and conspiracy theories. Um, many <clears throat> other reviews and notices, collected correspondence, letters, and emails. It's big. It's got a lot of people in here discussing it. I think you find it very interesting. Transcripts of selected radio and TV, television interviews. Correspondence related to the production of mysterious origins of man and correspondence related to reactions to the mysterious origins of man. And piece in here I thought I was uh, found very interesting. If you are worried about science in America, tell your local NBC station. NBC and its various sponsors that you object to the portrayal of this program as science. America must get smart and we can make a difference. Mysterious origins and similar programs are very definite black mark on NBC. It affiliates the program sponsors and its producers to represent them as science. Entertainment possibly, but not science. Why, I wonder, would a TV network, the makers of a program, and sponsors the first showing like Kellogg Company, Coca-Cola, McDonald's. Olive Garden, Toyota, Kellogg's, J.C. Penney, Wendy's, Lens Crafters, Folgers Coffee, M&M Candy, that are heavily dependent on solid science for their own welfare, promote the continuing decline of American prowess in science. Very sad indeed. As science, the program is garbage, but no one. I know, wanted the program banned from the airways, least of all me, who finds it a wonderful example of pseudo-science. 
Unfortunately, it represents the failure of the media to understand science or what they are doing to the American public's understanding of it, which seems we've been kept pretty dumb about a lot of science, especially things very dangerous and important like nuclear. And these are my thoughts. Producers of these kinds of so-called science shows demonstrate a lack of understanding of the fundamental process of how science is done, and they pander their ignorance to the public. This is a disgrace. It is a pity that the producers in NBC are now using the justifiable objections of scientists as a way of promoting their program. I challenge to NBC and its program producers to have an introduction to the reshowing of this program by real scientists one with proper credential, credentials from established and generally accepted scientific institution discuss the process of science and tell the viewers that the program may be entertainment, but it is not science. For further information about this program, NBC, the producers, sponsors, content, and previous comments, see the mom w, www site at the link. Ten or twenty years ago, the campaign of intimidation waged by Lips and other fundamentalist Darwinians in the scientific community would have been sufficient to keep NBC from airing the program again or force NBC to let a fundamentalist Darwinian commenter dictate to the show how they should see the show. That NBC had the courage to stand up to the intimidation and the audacity to use the protests from the fundamentalist Darwinians to promote the rebroadcast of the unchanged original show to the public is a refreshing sign that intellectual freedom is alive and well in America. The campaign of intimidation waged by Lips and his cohorts is a real demonstration of how fundamentalist Darwinian science, as opposed to most other science, works. Darwin Darwinism is an ideology that fundamentalist Darwinians uphold by unscientific means. After all, what is so scientific about trying to intimidate a television network into taking a show off the air? Darwinism is not a concept that can be demonstrated by ordinary scientific means. It is simply an article of faith, and adherents of this faith think that they have a right to impose it on, upon everyone and silence anyone who speaks against it to the general public. The fundamental, fundamentalist Darwinians would like a monopoly on access to the thinking of the general public. Fortunately, they do not have it, and I hope they never will. And I have a few more things to say about this, but i got to sign off for a second, and I'll be back on another vid.